I wasn't surprised in the outcome and how it went, no. You know, uh, going into this fight, I'm not going to go in there and, and uh, slug it out with a 255 55 heavyweight. You know, that, it, that his bread and butter is being quick and, and throwing bombs, you know. Um, for me, going in here, I haven't been hit in this whole tournament. I, didn't, I haven't been hit in the face in the Mo fight. I haven't been hit in the face in the Mitrione fight. I'm in the finals of the Grand Prix. You know, that was a dominant performance. Went out there, used that grappling, and, uh, and mauled him. If I'm picking for the whole mystique and nostalgia of it, I'm picking Fedor. You know, to win the heavyweight Grand Prix, uh, the title, be a two division champion, and doing it and do it beating Fedor, it doesn't get any bigger than that. You know, that being said, uh, they're they're so different. They're, they're you know, Chael. I think he. Uh, I know what I'm going to get with Chael. You know, with uh, Fedor, he has that mystique. You never know, you know, what he's going to do in there. You, you know, he throws bombs. You know, he's great on the ground. So, uh, if I have my choice, so it would be Fedor. Ryan, you're a very quiet man, very modest man. I suppose one of the other things as well is if you get Fedor, you won't get something chomping at you know, right? for five months. Do you want to avoid him chomping at you? I don't care. You know, I, I enjoy it. I can spit it back a little bit, not as well as he can, but. You know, I, I think it would be a fun build-up to that fight if it, if it was chill. I like both these guys, and I think they're both great, great fighters. And, and uh, you know, and for any one of them to be in the in the finals, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be fireworks. But um, you know, for me, it's just I think you ask anybody in this tournament, who would you want to fight in the finals? And stand across the cage, USA, Russia. You know, it's Fedor. Or... Yeah, I mean, Chael, you get what you get, right? I've been fighting guys like Chael my whole career, and I do extremely well against wrestlers. You know, I have most of my knockouts against other wrestlers. You know, um, like I said, with Fedor, you don't really know what you're gonna get. You don't know what Fedor you're gonna get. Um, you know, is he gonna come out, throw bombs, be aggressive? How's his cardio? We haven't seen his ground game in a long time. You know, how's that? You know, can I take him down? And is he constantly gonna be throwing up? you know, uh, different submissions, all that kind of stuff. Well, we don't know. So I think uh, Fedor is that unknown for sure, and we kind of know what we're going to get with Sonnen. Ryan, we asked you this week where you thought you stood in the 205-pound division in the world. Where do you think you stand in the heavyweight division in the world? Man, I, if I go out there and, and win this heavyweight tournament, you know, i got to be talked about in the pound for pound, regardless of promotion, you know. Um, if you look at my record and look of the guy, you know, who I fought, just killers in there, I'm 10 and... Actually, now I'm 11 and one in my last 12 fights, you know. And uh, uh, take a look at my record when you have a chance, you know. It, it, you know, even a guy like Mitrione, I went out there, got 10 eight rounds, and uh, he was the number one heavyweight in Bellator. Ryan, congrats on the win tonight. You said all along you wanted to go through the heavyweights to really feel like you earned the uh, heavyweight title at the end. Um, did you feel at any point during this fight that you had a chance to finish because it was dominant? Were you worried about punching yourself out at all? Well, I, with, the, with the punches, um, the ref was really on me about uh, hitting the ear, and I wasn't trying to hit him in the back of the head or anything like that. Um, so what I was, one thing I was surprised at, when I have <clears throat> what I finished Linton Vassell with, you know, he's a little skinny around the waist and whatnot, and I have a, a wrist ride and I start dropping bombs. Um, with Matt, it was harder to keep him down there. And so all he had to do was kind of turn his head and, and uh, the ref was on me about hitting the back of the head, even when I was getting close to that ear. So I had to be careful there. I felt like I could have potentially finished the fight there a few times. I had a, a Kimura, which I didn't see his hand raised about to tap, um, but his, his length was just kind of kind of off on that Kimura. And uh, I, I was kind of trying to step over his head, but it kind of lost it. You talked about the two of you are friends heading into this. It's just business. Um, when you were in there, though, I mean, what was that like? Was it any harder than any other fight? No, not really. <clears throat> um, he brought his own, you know, different style to the fight. He was, he was longer than I thought he would be as far as, you know, when he stretches out his hands, you know, he, he's, he's really long and he can move well. Um, and he, when he had a burst at me, you know, he was throwing, you know, throwing for broke right there. Everything he had into his, uh, his big frame and trying to knock me out right there. But, you know, I, I do that. I do this every day against guys that I, uh, that are my best friends, and, and uh, we train together. We go hard against each other. I fought friends before. It's a competition for me. I'm not trying to hurt him. I'm trying to go in there and, and uh, get my hand raised. You know. Right. Uh, fans you, were, were booing a little bit in the third round, especially. Did yeah. that bother you at all? No, not at all. That was a mauling.
You know, it was 10, eight rounds, uh, like I said, against the best heavyweight in the division. You know, and I, and go back to that, I haven't been hit in this tournament. I haven't been punched in the face in two fights against some of the best people in the world. They're both top 10. You know, Matt Mitrione is a top five heavyweight in, in the world. Doesn't matter what promotion, if not higher, you know. Um, you know, he goes out there and beats guys like, I mean, Derek Lewis is fighting for the UFC heavyweight championship of the world. You know, I think Matt Mitrione goes in there and, uh, and smokes him, you know. So uh, um, I don't care about those booze at all. Ryan, you have done so well. You haven't been hit, like you said. If you go through this tournament and win, do you think the heavyweight could be your new home? Uh, potentially. You know, uh, there, there's guys out there that have won both belts, you know. Um, I don't think there's guys out there that went out, won two belts, and then defended two belts. You know, so on my mind right now is going out there. And number one, you know, people were asking me before this fight, oh, the two division champion, like I could give a shit about it because I was concentrating on this fight. You know, now it's, it's, it's could be a reality. You know, I, I win one more fight and I'm there. You know, so for me, it's uh, um, right now in my mind, in my mindset, going into this fight, win this fight, defend light heavyweight, defend heavyweight. It's, it's um, unlikely to happen, but would you in your heart of hearts, if you won the heavyweight tournament, love for MMA to come together and you to face, say, Daniel Cormier, who has both of those belts as well? Do you think about that? Oh, I do think about that, you know, and uh, we all are kind of woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, and a uh, uh, big reason for me to come over is I believed I was the best in the world and, and I never got the opportunity to show it. You know, over here I did, you know, and so, uh, um, yeah, I'm, it's always there. I'm a competitor. I want to be the best in the world. I don't have like, oh yeah, but there's another organization and there's got, you know, um, you know, taking nothing away from him. He's a dominant champion. He's, he's one of the best to ever do it. You know, of course I want it, you know, but uh, will that ever happen? No. It's a shame you can't get an undisputed champion. I know, right? Way, though, I know. It? I think uh, maybe later on down the road, but it, you know, business is business and I get that. And you'll fight him someday. You know. What's that? You'll fight him someday somewhere. Oh, man. Even if you both put on your own promotion or whatever. Okay, yeah. Yeah. We're 50 years old. <laughs> years back, you lost a little bit of sharing. Yeah. Ever since then, you've been on a tear. You're beating guys, arguably better than Phil Davis, Matt Patrion. What changed? What made you go from a guy who would bounce from win the loss to now? Yeah, so, uh, so, so like I was saying, you know, I'm 11-1 I'm, uh, in one, my last 12 fights. You know, there, I, I had a hiccup in there with Anthony Johnson. I was going in there. I was like, ah, I'm going to, you know, take him down, take him down. And I, I just didn't set anything up. I took a shot. And then uh, I was thinking about that fight ever since, you know, and uh, the next fight I promised myself, I was like, you, you are, you're the best, come on. Like, you don't have to second guess yourself or anything or, or try something dumb, you know. So for me, I think that fight changed everything where I was like, all right, I'm going in there and uh, I'm, I'm going to be smart about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be carefree. I'm not going to make a big deal about it during fight week. I'm just going to go in there and perform. So after that fight, um, I just, you know, I. I went out there and knocked out the number three ranked UFC guy, Latifi, you know, then uh, uh, Noguera, you know, they came over here, won the belt, fought a tough Linton Vassell, you know, knocked out King Mo, you know, then here I just beat one of the best heavyweights in the world, you know, and so it's just my mindset. My mindset's changed. When I was fighting guys like Glover, I was second guessing myself. Am I the best in the world? Do I deserve to be up here? You know, now I know I am. You're, you're 35. Yep. Yeah. And how long do you see yourself when you need to do this? I feel the best I've ever felt mentally, physically. You know, my body's, you know, I, the last couple of training camps, I've been showing up and I'm like, you know, knock on wood, I was like, how am I not, I don't have one ding, nothing, a sore toe, a, a shin, nothing. You know, and so uh, uh, for me, I'm just going to keep rolling until I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just having so much fun. My training's going amazing. I feel like I'm getting better and better every fight, so. Right. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of guys out there that are uh, you know, the best in the world can test me for sure. You know, Phil and I always have close fights. They're boring as hell, but you know he's always a, uh, a tough dude to fight. You know, and uh, I think he's one of the best guys in the world in 205 pound division. You know, I, I don't want to fight him anymore because, like I said, our fights are terrible. But uh, you know, the in heavyweight division. You know, you got big guys in there throw bombs. You know, but I think everybody has their own little, their weakness that I can exploit. And I mean, a lot of people talk about maybe Musasi coming up to 205. He said that as 
Yeah. Yep. Oh hell yeah! You know they, those kind of fights. This is where I came over to Bellator. You know, um, when I was a light heavyweight and I won that belt, they asked me to come up and, and do the heavyweight tournament. You know, I, I didn't even know one name that was in this tournament. We said yes, let's do it. You know, and so here we are in the finals. Feeling good right now, Ryan. How much of that is the lack of a weight cut going into these fights? Ah, uh, not too much. I always I feel good when I fight at 205. Also, it just takes one less stress off fight week. Yeah, I'm going to head over there tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning. Um, I'm glad I fought first. I get to sit back and watch him, you know, go at it and uh, be carefree and, and have some fun. You look heavier. You look not heavier. You're obviously heavier. You look happier at heavyweight than you were at uh, light heavy. Yeah, well, you know, going into a, a, a going, going into a fight week, you know, you're just like, all right, I got to pull 15, 20 pounds of water out of my body, and that's a fight in and of itself. You do that. And then you're like, okay, now I have to fight another man in a cage tomorrow, and I have to get rehydrated and feel good to do that, you know. And so, um, <laughs> one less thing I have to do. <clears throat> Ryan, since it came up for the Toros Fantasy Bookers, how do you uh, how do you think you do against Cormier? How do you think you guys match up? I think it match up well with them, you know. Uh, uh, especially now, if I would have matched up with them five years ago, you know, I don't think I'd do all that well. I feel like now I I, I beat them, you know. It's just one of those things where. Um, it's too bad it'll never happen. You feel like you should have had that fight. Uh, oh yeah, it was man, I was uh, I was promised that title shot, and then they gave it to a guy that got knocked out, and is is literally fight beef his last fight, and they give it to him, you know. So that was kind of the one 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 time when I'm like, you know what, screw just fighting to try to get a championship. I was like, I'm just gonna go out there and have fun. You I the well. official prediction for tomorrow, not who you want to fight. Yeah, I mean, just how you see it going down. I, I just don't know. Battle. I usually pick a winner. If Chell, if Chell gets a takedown, that first takedown, I think he wins this whole fight. Just one takedown, because that's going to give him the confidence. He'll go on there and get a, you know, get a one around or whatnot. If Fedor, if he uh, stuffs two takedowns, I think Fedor wins that fight. It's literally 50-50 for me. If you were to win, when you were leaving the UFC, you would talk a lot of trash. Take a completely different route. You're complimenting your opponents. What's the big change? You know, there's a time there when it's like, what do I got to do to get a title fight? You know, and it's, uh, it was one of those things where um, just trying everything in the book, you know, and, and uh, you know, me, Cormier, were jawing at each other a little bit and, and uh, you know, uh, trying to set up that fight. You know, I think he wanted it too. Um, but then it just never happened. And that's what I was kind of going back to what I was telling him. It just was like, all right. I'm just going to go out there and have fun. I'm not going to worry about that title fight on the horizon. So it wasn't personal. Like when you stormed the uh, press conference that time, nah. you were just trying to get a fight. Yeah, we're trying to get a fight. All right, uh, follow-up question. You say you feel great at Edward, you look great at Edward. You ever look back and say, man, I shouldn't have fighting Edward all along? No, the, the, I don't cut all that much weight. You know, I'm 230 weighing in, and uh, it's, not, it's not difficult for me. You know, and so um, I feel like the guys, you know, there's trade-offs. The guys at 205 are in better shape and fat, faster. The guys at heavyweight takes one punch. You know, they're not as fast, but they, they throw throw or they throw hard. One thing you kept saying is, you were saying, hey, he's going to weigh 10 pounds, 15 pounds. He weighed 30 pounds. Yeah, so yeah. It's a lot different than you expected. Well, I thought he was going to come in low 240s. So two-part two question. First part, did you feel the difference in the, in, the, in the match? And the second part is, is it an advantage to be that light? Like, for example, you go against Fader or Chill, they're going to be a lot lighter. It's gonna be harder because that kind of match your speed. Or no, that I'm used to fighting that speed. You know, Matt Matt was at is at speed on the feet. You know, um, and so that's why people are like, oh, he's fast. He's this. Um, he's he's as fast as a 205er, which I've been fighting my whole life. Oh, he's big. Yeah, but 205ers are big. But he was big in there. You know, um, but at the same time, it's a different big. He's yeah, he's big. I can't get my arms around him. This and that. But I can break him down easier than a. Agile 205 or that's able to get to his base and pop up, you know. So, last question, guys. It was easier being that he was slower and heavier. I think I had more opportunities to break him down and, and be able to put him up, keep him on his back than a 205 or, yeah. Ryan, given the opportunity, if you were to win uh, the entire tournament, uh, would you give Mitrione, knowing he's your friend, a rematch to prove himself against you? That um, I think that fight kind of settled it, you know. I, I, I don't think how it goes any different, you know. Um, I don't want to fight my friends. You know, we, we uh, had to fight because we were in a tournament, you know. Uh, it, it's one of those things where I know he's going to be back up and who knows what, where I'm going to be, and so he'll get his shot again.
Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.